welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be synchronizing the carburetors on this BMW R75-5. Now this procedure is going to apply to both 32 and 40 millimeter bang carburetors on pretty much all airheads across the whole airhead model lineup. So this will apply to uh, slash five, the slash sevens, um, an R100, R65, kind of whatever you got at home, this procedure will be able to be kind of translated over. So just follow along closely. I'm gonna go um, kind of outline each step and give a, try and do my best at giving a good description on what all these adjustments do. There's quite a few adjustments into the, you know, a novice mechanic. This might be a little uh, overwhelming of a task, but I'm gonna do my best to go over everything and just follow along closely and we'll get this done together. So before we do anything, you can see there's a number right here, 64329. So all these carburetors are gonna be stamped with a number either on the side right there, or I have a, another set of carburetors torn apart right here. And you can see that that same style number is right there, 64, 32, 326. So what you're gonna to wanna to do first is track down that number. And then I'm going to, in the description, I'm going to attach all of the uh, carburetor, the carburetor base settings. So the base setting, you know, is gonna kind of tell you the what, what main jet should be in your carburetor. If you look here, this one right here, you can kind of read on there. It's uh, I think that says the 155 main jet. You should be able to see that there. And then the pilot jet here, which is even gonna be even smaller. You might be able to read there on the side. 40. So you can see that right there. And that's gonna give you kind of a general, uh, kind of get you, figure out where your carburetor is supposed to be. So these bikes, you know, over the years have been kind of messed with a lot. You know, you don't know who's been swapping jets and whatever. If you're, if you're down in Colorado, you might have a smaller jet size, but first thing we're gonna do is just get your carburetor set up to the base settings. So I will have a chart linked below in the description that's going to give a kind of a key, like uh, what this number on your carburetor is, and that's gonna tell you what your idle, your airspeed screw, the one right under here, that screw, what the base setting for that is gonna be, the base setting for the main jet, as well as the base setting for the pilot jet. So I have gone ahead and verified that the correct jetting is in this carburetor. You can uh, pull this float ball off by popping that spring back, pulling the float down, um, looking in here, make sure it's nice, good gas. There's no uh, water or anything like that floating in there. And then uh, look underneath the carburetor here and your main jet's gonna be right there and you'll have to unscrew your pilot jet in there to make sure that you got the uh, correct jet in, in place. So your main jet's right there, pilot jet's right there. What I'm going to do now is you can see this little um, flathead screw there on the side of the carburetor. That's your little vacuum port. I'm gonna undo this small screw, set that aside. And then I have a carb mate right here that I'll show you. And I'll hook the hoses right up to the port there and do that on both the left and right hand side. So the tool I am using is a carb mate, a pretty nice tool. You can set your uh, resolution there. It's an electronic, you can set your resolution there. Um, and then also your offset. So you wanna get that set up right in the middle. And this is gonna give you a really, really accurate reading. We will now undo the flat head on the right hand side carburetor. Undo that screw that I had talked about, set that aside and hook up one of your hoses. 
And there's all sorts of these different carb sink tools. You can get whatever one you want. I just found this one works the best. It's a little pricey, but you know, I do this a lot so I can kind of justify that. We now have our carb, carb mate tool here, synchronized or not synchronized, but installed. The hoses are going to their uh, each carburetor and I'll give you a kind of a breakdown on what each one of these adjustments do. So your choke lever is here. This cable goes down to your carburetor there. We're not gonna worry about that. But one thing we will do is before we even get started, you just wanna make sure that your choke is off. And when your choke is off, down here where the choke is kinda pulling and pushing on down there, that lever, you wanna make sure that when the lever's off, if you push down, pull down on that lever, that the choke itself is actually off. Sometimes these cables will be um, improperly adjusted and when your choke lever's off, you'll actually maybe be giving one carburetor or both carburetors like 10% choke and then you're gonna be kind of chasing your tail. So we're gonna make sure on both sides that lever all the way down, which it is. And then we can go ahead and get look for slack in this throttle cable. So we don't need to have a super precise amount of slack. You just wanna make sure both sides have a little bit of cable slack so that, yep, you know, so that one carburetor isn't going to be pulling harder than the others. We're just kind of setting it up right now before we even think about starting it. And then that number I told you to look up is going to have your base setting for your air screwed down here. So on this particular carburetor, the base setting was one turn out. So I went ahead with a flathead, sorry, with a flathead screwdriver, turn it all the way in. You can turn it all the way in until it comes to a stop and then go out one turn. Most carburetors are gonna be between three quarter and one and a half turns. And that's adjusting uh, your air into the engine at idle. So as you bring it out, or sorry, this is adjusting fuel into the engine at idle. So as you bring it out, it's going to be richening your mixture, richening your mixture at idle. And as you bring it in, it's giving it less fuel, same amount of air. And then that will then give you a leaner mixture. So now that we have this set to our base setting, a little bit of play on our throttle cable there and make sure our uh, choke lever isn't, um, on all the time. Now we can go ahead, we're gonna start the bike, and uh, there's a idle screw right here. This screw right there is gonna be your idle screw, and that's gonna adjust your idle. So let's fire this thing up and see how it runs. Started right up. So, you can see here, it's pretty close, but at idle, it's pulling a little bit, it's pulling a little bit harder on the right carburetor. So what we're gonna do, since it's idling a little high, we're gonna go over to our right carburetor and back it off. So, I'm gonna turn this screw right here, loosening it, and as I loosen that, you can see I brought it in, and if I go a little bit too far, you'll see it start pulling to one side. So I'm gonna tighten that back up, bring it right in the middle, you can kinda of hear the engine smooth out there. So that's pretty good to have it right there at idle right away. And now, with the throttle, we're gonna bring it off idle. We're gonna hold it at about uh, 
whatever you're cruising at. So like 3000 RPM. I'm just gonna bring it up off idle. Another thing I forgot to mention, make sure your gas is on. I could tell it was starting to die there. So our idle's looking good. With the throttle, bring it up, bring it up off idle. That's, we're pulling really good. Um, just for uh, the sake of this video, I'm gonna adjust this right here. It's a 10 millimeter nut, just to show you what would happen if this was out of spec. I went ahead, loosened this nut here, and turned this uh, cable out a little bit. So now the right side is gonna be pulling a little bit harder than the right, or sorry, than the left. The right side's gonna be pulling harder than the left. So I'm gonna bring it up off idle, and you'll see. See how the right side was pulling a little bit harder there? And I'll actually just kinda bring this up lock the I'll lock the cruise control here just kind of holding the engine off idle so you can see that so you'll see down there as I uh, adjust this thing I like to do is with an infrared thermometer like this, shine it at both head pipes to make sure that each cylinder is getting a good burn. So you can see here, we'll say 470 degrees, head over to this side. So you can see both cylinders are pretty much dead on. So I can guarantee you that the mixture on both the left and right cylinder, I'll kill the bike here. So you can see with the uh, infrared thermometer here that both the left and right cylinders were right around 470 degrees. So that's pretty much ideal. Um, and to adjust that, we can adjust our mixture here. Obviously, if we make the mixture a little bit leaner, the cylinders are gonna get a little bit hotter and we can kind of tune that in. We're not really looking for a perfect set, you know, 500 degrees on each side. That's gonna depend a lot on kind of where you are in the world. But as long as they're, you know, within 10, 20 degrees of each other, in this scenario, they were pretty much dead on 
and I'm not complaining there. So um, just a little overview. This screw right here is gonna adjust our pull, carburetor pull off idle. This one right here, we really don't have to worry about. That's our choke, choke cable down there. We just had to be mindful that when the choke is off right here, that the lever down there is off. And down here is our fuel screw. So a little pilot, pilot screw it's called. And then that screw right there is our idle, which is going, going to adjust our carburetor pull off idle. And as far as an idle goes, you want your generator light on your dash just barely flickering. So looking at the dash on here, the generator light is just like kind of on and off just ever so slightly. We can go ahead, remove our hoses, replace our screws on both left and right hand carburetors, and as always, have a safe ride.